Brent Sandback is the focus of Gallery 2 that you see behind me. Uh, he was a New York artist who studied at Yale and though he studied philosophy originally quickly turned to studio art and started making work out of yarn. His actual first work in this regard was an outline of a two by four, a long plank of wood, where he used a metal framework and cord strung between it. And then he quickly realized he didn't need a metal support system. He could just attach the yarn in the gallery from the wall to the ceiling, from the floor to the ceiling through tiny invisible supports. So that's the system you see behind us. He wanted to create a sculpture that was present and absent at the same time. And the way he figured out how to do that was to be able to use yarn to literally define air and space. We were very lucky to have Amy Sandbeck, who runs his foundation and is a prominent curator herself, come here and help us select a number of works by Fred Sandbeck that interact with this space. And this gallery is particularly historic in the columns that we have here and its unusual triangular shape. We're able to come up with a selection of works that hadn't been realized in decades and sometimes had never been shown before. This work is unusual in that it utilizes the corner of the gallery. A lot of artists in this exhibition use corners as a way of activating the space and encouraging the viewer to think about their interaction in a space that they might not notice otherwise. And this work is particularly striking in that regard because it utilizes white yarn. And the white yarn seems to appear and disappear against the white wall the more you look at it. A lot of critics have talked about his work as deceptive or as an optical illusion. And he, in fact, thought that that was wrong because it implied that the viewer had to look somewhere else, had to be taken somewhere else in order to understand the work. So he instead thought of his work not as an illusion, but as something that was complete in and of itself. It was both easy to discern and invisible. It was both two-dimensional and three-dimensional. So he saw that as all part of the experience. This drawing is a great representation of how drawing worked in Fred Sandbach's artistic practice. Sandbach was using drawing as both a notation tool and as a documentary tool. So you can see how he has sketched out in red the drawing, the edges of the gallery space itself. Um, but that is very loose. Those walls almost seem to be like glass. They seem to be disappearing or bursting open. Whereas the lines of his sculpture are very clear and assertive and tangible. Um, so what's fascinating about that is that is the opposite of what most people would say the experience of his sculpture is. The walls in the gallery you presume to be stable and firm, and the lines that he creates in space appear to hover and be passable. But that's not how Fred Sandbach saw it. The lines themselves are this tangible presence that cannot be moved, whereas the gallery itself is the thing that is falling away in our vision.